Gentlemen, I am beside myself because I used to think that justice was blind. I, now I happen to be wrong. But, Amir, if we go through the, the list of things that they prosecute and don't prosecute, is, it any, is there any way to substantiate any type of impartiality? Well, you've got to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. But, judges, you're right. Are supposed to be our backstop. They're supposed to be our last line of defense when you have politically motivated prosecutors. Um, and when you see that they're compromised uh, in this way that Judge Mershon has given these donations, now that, by the way, is completely improper. There are certain things that judges can do. Uh, they have certain window periods around the time of their elections or re-elections where they can be politically involved. But one of the things that's always verboten is a judge giving campaign contributions to other candidates or to political, uh, political committees such as this. So they can't be politically involved and they can't create the appearance of being politically involved. And if we're not going to enforce that rule, then nobody's going to have any faith in our justice system and everything is going to crumble. Yeah. But Frank, let's start with, you know, I'll pull up a letter that we that you just wrote to the New York County Supreme Court about Judges Merchant's comp uh, campaign contributions in 2020. You wrote, I think the fact that this violation has been so widely reported dramatically undermines the credibility of Judge Merchant's ability to preside over a criminal case of this magnitude. Have you received a response from this? Uh, not as of yet, but I'm glad that we're talking about it because I really want the public and the Office of Court Administration in New York State to be aware of this because you have two issues here. You have the issue that you just raised, mm -hmm. Carl, about impartiality, and this clearly is a blatant violation of any pretense of impartiality because even if he does a great job and calls balls and strikes as objectively as, as he can, that this totally undermines minds every single thing that's going to happen mm -hmm. in this trial because the perception is he donated to the fella that Donald Trump ran against. So the perception among the public is going to be that no matter what happens, anything he does won't be fair. But the other issue is what Amir just alluded to. Section 100.5 of the rules of judicial conduct that govern judges say you're not allowed to be political. Once you're on the bench, even once you're a judicial yeah. candidate, you can't do things like make uh, campaign contributions. So if he's not going to follow yeah. the rules that govern judges, how can the lawyers, the jurors, and the defendant be expected to follow his instructions on the law. This sends such a poor message, which is that some judges don't have to follow the rules that other judges are bound by. And I worry about the implications for future criminal proceedings. Yeah, well, that's the bigger thing is uh, what precedence is set. And if anybody can like, stop Republicans is not exactly impartial. Um, but a Daily Wire investigation, Amir, co uncovered that the Supreme Court Justice uh, Sotomayor, she will, did not recuse herself from copyright cases involving book publisher Penguin Random House, despite the fact that she received millions of dollars, it's three million bucks, from the same publisher for her own books. But of course, media is not going to touch this story, and they're just going to obsess over Clarence Thomas, right? Right. Well, I mean, it always goes one way. And like they didn't talk about when Ruth Bader Ginsburg was outspoken about Donald Trump when he was campaigning in 2016. Stephen Breyer, when he was on the bench, had similar kind of uh, uh, interest, financial interests in, in uh, companies that were litigants in front of uh, the Supreme Court. But it always goes one way. I mean, the fact of the matter is there isn't going to be a, a mandatory recusal rule for that sort of thing, but there might be uh, you know, uh, the instance where a judge should just to protect the the, the perception of impartiality and neutrality, uh, which is very important in order to encourage people to have faith in our system mm -hmm. uh, where a judge would step off or say, we're not I'm not going to sit on this case. But Frank, when have the when was the, I mean, I don't know, but when was the last time a Supreme Court justice recused himself for something like this? Because they're saying, oh, well, you know, no cases in front of Clarence Thomas had any type of uh, ties to any of the um, the the, uh, the money that was received or anything like that, um, or for per selling his house or something. But yet, when we have a three million dollar windfall for a Supreme Court justice from the very people that had publishing disputes in front of the Supreme Court, is there any ethics complaint that you can do against a Supreme Court justice? 
Uh, not not at the federal level. The only disciplinary measure that really exists is impeachment. And uh, the one time that we tried to impeach a Supreme Court justice, it didn't work out. They're answerable to no one. And I think uh, it's actually one of the reasons that you're seeing a sort of a bipartisan push for some more transparency on the Supreme Court front. But there are all these judges, uh, like Judge Mershon in New York, that mm -hmm. don't have life terms and that do have a bar. And so the Supreme Court on the federal level is sort of a different ball game because not only do they serve for life, but there's not really a realistic way to remove them. So they essentially get to make their own rules. But there's a lot of judges, including in a lot of the cases that you've been talking about that make egregious decisions mm -hmm. where there are disciplinary measures that you can take. And I don't think just because the Supreme Court on a federal level seems like a lost cause, we should abandon the issue of demanding that judges at least pretend to be in part on a local level. Yeah, well, it would be nice if we had some transparency on, oh, I don't know, the Dobbs case and who leaked that one before. Anyway, Amir Benno, Frank Morano, we appreciate you being here. Thank you.